much of the work is collage work. It's bits and pieces, like our life is bits and pieces that we piece together to make a whole. Janet Taylor Pickett, the Matisse series, showing at the Montclair Art Museum, looks at the artist Janet Taylor Pickett's ongoing creative conversation with the French artist Henri Matisse. I've always wanted to be an artist, always. I had an art corner, and to this day, that's what I have. Um, it's always been there. And, you know, Eric, creativity comes in so many different ways. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're a visual artist. You can be a musician, you can be a dancer, you can be so many things, but when it's nurtured and you're a kid and you're a child, that's the beauty of it. When you have parents that support it and never allow it to go away through adversity, they never told me, well, you're never gonna make any money. All they told me was that the world is gonna say no to you because you're colored, and back then they used colored. Um, you just got to say yes to you and believe that you're going to make your way in this world. A lot of her dresses, she has a series of dresses that's just showing primarily upstairs now. And uh, it's a big part of the gallery. And so she does a lot of collage work, which I really like. Uh, the Matisse inspired things. You can really. Even before you hear her talk about it, you can kind of see it, the inspiration there, kind of the um, influence of the Matisse. And she gets a lot of her ideas by going to bookstores, and she'll find oftentimes out of print books, beautiful art books, and then she'll create a series based upon what she's Looking learned. Through books, I probably came across his works and didn't quite know who he was until I got older and went to school and looked at work and looked at his art. But there was something that always drew me in to his work. And as I got older, and I began to study art and study art history and, and all of that, I began to make the correlation of why I was drawn to his work. Because I literally, growing up, was kind of living inside those rooms that he was creating. Because my mother loved to go to thrift we call them thrift stores now, but they would be secondhand stores or sh rummage sales. And she and I would go with my grandmother. And m my father would also bring home interesting uh, items because he was the superintendent of this, this um, apartment building on campus. Uh, and campus meaning I grew up in Ypsilanti and Ann Arbor, Michigan. <clears throat> so there was stuff. There was interesting vases and, and pillows and textures. So I grew up with that kind of stuff in, in the living room. Uh, everyone should see the exhibit, the Matisse-inspired exhibit as a whole. Uh, Janet Taylor Pickett's work in the gallery specifically. I think what you're going to get from that is the, the influence of Matisse as an artist over a diverse uh, array of works. You see the Matisse influence there, but you also see how her stuff just flows through and you know you just get to really see, you know, kind of like her internal head conversation, uh, just the way that it's all put together. Once you see her work and you see such a complete body of work in one space, you're really enveloped in her story. Uh, I, I don't think you can see her exhibition and not leave really having a personal connection to her as an artist and her as a, as a woman. Janet takes images from lots of different books, from all parts of history, so a lot of art history, but also from ethnographic books. She's taken indigo dyers, women who are indigo dyers, 
in Africa and collaged them up the center of the dress and then topped it off with a Matisse blue nude that she has altered by putting an indigo dyed turban on top of Matisse's work. One of the things I love most about Janet's work is uh, her pulling in autobiographical references uh, of her life and her family and the impact that her family and her culture has had on her identity. Uh, I love the references to other uh, parts of art history and how she combines all of this into you know, a collage or a drawing or uh, a whole series of cutouts of the, the, the dress as a, uh, as a vehicle for expression. We always had flowers because my father was a gardener and so was my mother. So there were flower things and patterns and pillows and knickknacks. And then when I looked at Matisse's paintings, he had all that stuff in his paintings. And then I was drawn to the colors. So who knows um, where that kind of draw comes, comes from. Sometimes I think it's s spiritual. I think that you're drawn to things that your soul wants to examine. Janet uh, has been interested in indigo for quite some time and began dyeing her own fabrics in backyard vats and oftentimes will use her own indigo dyed fabric in the work. So it will be paper collage with some fabric collage on it. And indigo interests her because she loves the color blue, but also because it is, it has such a deep connection to her ancestry as an African-American woman. Indigo is one of the most ancient dyes in the world, and it, ha it played a big role in the African slave trade. A human being was traded for a length of indigo cloth. And during the uh, American Revolution, when the dollar uh, was no longer worth anything, they used indigo cakes for money. So it has a really interesting history in the US, but in Africa, West African and North African countries, it was really used to empower women because women were the indigo dyers. So because Janet's work is so much about the feminine and empowering women, as you notice, she uses all dresses. So her work is she uses the dress as a metaphor for identity. So for her, the color indigo was a wonderful talking point and a way to express some of these things that she was learning in her, in her process as well as use a color that she loved and tie it into a color that Matisse also loved and used often. Life is long but art lives forever and our response to it will always change. The art is not going to change, we're going to change. And that's about having a conversation with yourself, with the world that you're observing. And that's what I've done with this particular series, Eric, because I'm having a conversation across time and space with a white male European modernist, artist, Henri Matisse. And when you look at that work, sometimes it's seamless. So it's my take in having this conversation with this man. Um, it's my take as an African-American female artist, but also from a specific, it's like when you read poetry, you read it, read it, read it, and it's from someone else's point of view, but you feel something from it. It's touching you very, very deeply. And from the specific, you get this universal kind of sense of where you are in the world. And this artist's expression of, of their journey, and you look at it, and you are touched by something in it. And it lifts you up. Because for me, art is healing. It's really, really healing. And in this environment that we're living now, we need art more than ever. Oh, we need it more than ever. And that's what gives me solace when I come into my workspace and I'm working and I'm having this spiritual conversation. Because for me, creativity and being a creator, being an artist is getting in touch with the spirit. So, um, 
that's what brings me joy. And that's what this show that I'm so blessed and humbled to be part of brings to people. 